Hi guys, this is lesson number four in the beginning sequence. So as always, we review the previous lessons and then we jump in to the new things. We start lesson four with the second four cuts in Myers for opening drill. So we're still gonna start in Vom Tog and then we're gonna start from the lower right. So we're gonna drop down, knuckle to thigh, cut number one pulls through, unwind, cut number two, goes through the same line, all the way back, cut down for three, up for four and back in Von Tog and then again we can turn around I'm gonna do it backwards just to make it easier for the camera so we drop one two three four and back to Von Tog so last week we did we start from the upper right this week we're starting from the lower right we're doing full cuts so we come up trace the line back come down trace the line back so that is the second four cuts in the mire for opening drill the next thing that we talk about is thrusting. Uh, it's just really a couple of things I want to talk about with thrusting. So just like we have overcuts and undercuts, you can essentially have um, overthrust and underthrusts. Easiest way to think about that is if, if I'm in the, the plow position and I'm doing the thrusting transition that we talked about in the kind of guard kata. So if I pivot and thrust from this lower position, I have an, an underthrust. So when we talked about uh, transitioning between the two plows, we talked about pivoting and thrusting, and then stepping and retracting, and then pivoting and thrusting, and then stepping and retracting. So this guard transition that we practice gives us our, our under thrusts. Similarly, if I'm in the ox position, so now I'm in the high point forward guard, um, I can thrust over. So I can just do this with a gather step, or again, I can pivot and thrust, and come to this side, and pivot and thrust, and come to this side. So I can thrust over, or I can thrust under. And then of course, if I'm in my kind of central guard, my straight bearing position, I can just thrust. Couple points on this one, still move the sword before the body. And if we're gonna be opposing the opponent's sword, we really wanna turn our edge into the opponent's sword. So you'll usually see me rolling flat because I'm assuming that uh, my I'm gonna be opposing my opponent's sword and I wanna get my edge ideally on their flat so that I get a good mechanical position so that I can move their sword out of the way, keep the line closed, and then also stab them. So you'll also see I don't just thrust straight from the hip, or if I'm kind of more here, I go across the body so that I'm closing the line. So most of the lessons that we talked about in terms of cutting, thrusting follows the, the same idea. So we don't spend a super long time on it because we ideally have been drilling this, this set of motions in the guard transitions uh, but we want to talk about it briefly because the first play that we're going to get into is the straight parrying thrust counter from Meyer's rapier section. So we do a lot of pulling from the various parts of the book when we're doing our beginning sequence. So the first play, the first period longsword play that students get at the club is not actually from Meyer's longsword section, it's actually from his rapier section. So I'm going to have people start in kind of a standard straight parrying position arms are extended but not locked, point is, is pointing towards the bad guy, and I definitely want them to be right foot lead because parrying to your open side rather than your cross side is easier to learn the motion. So we're going to face our opponent, uh, and in, in the club this is a pair drill, so we can practice this on our own at home. Uh, if you have a partner at home that's great, they can just throw an over how at your head, but it's alright if you're on your own. So we're going to be in our straight parrying position, we're going to turn our point and our edge to face the threat even kick the back foot a little bit just to make sure we have that nice ramp effect where it goes into the strong and then we're going to raise our hand a little bit and we're going to lunge or gather forward and thrust him in the face and th that's the whole play so we're going to practice from here parry thrust return parry thrust return parry thrust return this is a two time motion we are not trying to do a single time counter that will come later, but the first rule in, in fighting with a sword is to not die. So we want to make sure we have a good parry, then we can worry about the counter. So right foot lead, straight parrying position, parry, raise the sword. We're actually going to keep contact, so I'm not trying to get my sword off of their sword because I want to control it if I can. So I'm going to parry, thrust, recover. Then we're going to switch feet and we're going to do it on the other side. So now I have a left foot lead. I'm still here, so I'm still going to turn my long edge into their attack. I still want my point. Remember guys, if uh, the attacker is a three-headed monster, 
you're going to stab the, the head from the side that is attacking you. So if I'm facing my opponent and they cut from the right, I'm going to stab the, the head over their right shoulder. I'm going to stab the head where the attack is coming from. So that kind of gives me the alignment for my parry. Then I'm going to stab the head in the middle. So now if I'm on this side, I'm, clearly I'm going to stab the, the left head. So I'm going to parry, raise my sword, thrust together in, return. Parry, raise my sword, thrust, commit. Parry, thrust, and come back. And that is the first uh, kind of interactive play from the manuals that students get introduced to when we start moving out just really basic mechanical patterns. If you're drilling this on your own, you can certainly do like five on one side, five on the other. You can also, if you're feeling comfortable with that and you just want to mix it up a little bit, start with the right foot lead, parry, thrust, recover, step back, parry, thrust, recover, step back. And that way you can alternate side to side. You should, of course, be able to parry to either side. So if that feels really comfortable, now start with your right foot forward. And now we're going to go to our, our kind of cross side. This is the harder side to work on, which is I always, I always have students start to the open side because it's easier. But keep your right foot forward and now parry to the cross side and come back. And then the same thing, put your left foot in front, parry to the cross side and come back. I think easier with the feedback if you have a partner, but we're all working with what we can, so go ahead and work on that. The last drill that students get in lesson four is something I've talked about in other videos, so we'll just go over it very briefly. It's the A-frame versus hanging guard drill. So one person is the A-frame person, the other person is the hanging guard person. You are the A-frame person. Your job is to start in the middle position, do your good parry, and then we're gonna counter cut to the same side. Meyer actually talks about that the side that people launch their attack from is the side that they are open, so we're going to attack that side. So if they cut from the right, I'm gonna do my parry, I'm gonna push the palm, I'm gonna use a little, little kind of offline step. So I'm gonna step and pivot, and that lets me cut to the side they just launched their attack from, and then they were gonna cut, they're gonna parry that and cut to the other side, and now I'm gonna parry to this side, step and pivot, and now I'm gonna to cut to the side they just attacked from, and I'm basically back in the middle. So you're kind of doing an infinity loop of kind of a standard parry and a counter cut. So parry, counter cut, parry, counter cut, parry, counter cut, parry, counter cut, forever. Or until it's time for the drill to stop or for you to switch jobs. You are the hanging guard person. You're gonna start in your bomb tog and you're gonna launch a good overhow from your right. You're gonna cut the person in parry and when they do their counter cut you're going to step out roll into the hanging guard so that you take it on your sword and then pivot and cut to your left step out and parry pivot and cut to your right and now you're doing an infinity of the hanging guard so you would do that 10 20 a million times until the drill ended or you switch jobs usually we do sets of 10 so the attacker will do 10 cut, hanging guard, cut, hanging guard, 10 times, and then they switch jobs. Just remember, whoever is starting the attack is gonna be the hanging guard person. Whoever is defending first is gonna be the A-frame person. Uh, do each half independently if you're home by yourself. If you do have a partner you can train with, then each of you should do uh, both jobs, 10, 10 sets or so, and then go back and forth and see how it goes. And that is what we end uh, lesson four with. If students have been with us for a month consistently at this point, uh, we might introduce the very first version of any kind of a free play scenario that we do. And for us, it's three for threes. So you wear at least masks. You, students can wear gloves, but you shouldn't be going at a speed where uh, injuries are really a problem. Maybe some leather gloves for chafing. But uh, one person does three attacks, any attacks they want. They can thrust, they can cut, and the other person's gonna defend all three times. And the speed really is one, two, three very slow it gives you time to think about if i've cut and parried what is the best place for me to go where are they going to be open where can i go safely because if i just pull my sword off try to hit over here clearly i'm, I'm going to be attacked so it gives you as the attacker time to think okay how do i keep myself safe between my cuts how do i keep myself safe when i want to go into the next attack the defender is going to defend all three from there you don't stop and retract from whatever that last parry was now the rules switch and the other person attacks three times. So if you were just attacking, now you have to defend. One, two, three, and then from here, you switch back. One, two, three, 
and the swish. So it's three for threes, three attacks for three attacks, going back and forth, very slow. If you miss a block or a parry, you don't speed up to catch it. You figure out why you're in that bad position, you fix it, and then you go on. So it's not scripted, but it is very, very controlled. But at least it gives you a chance to kind of play with some things and explore options, what it's like when you don't know exactly what's happening. Uh, and that's our first step towards sparring. There's a few kind of uh, escalating steps before we let the students just flat out free play. And so by lesson four, we introduce them to this one. Thanks.